Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is news in RFM 6 and RSTAP 9. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Dluba Software. For instance, the content of the website, the German and English webinars, newsletters, and so on. I will be the moderator today and I will also present this webinar. I will give an overview what we integrated in the add-ons or we implemented new features, new add-ons and so on in approximately the last year. Yeah, in short overview, yeah, the webinar will take yeah, about one hour. My colleague Jürgen Teilmann will support me, but yeah, he can introduce himself. Yes, thank you, Andreas. Yes, my name is Jürgen Teilmann. I've been working for Global Support for maybe one, two and a half years now. And I'm in customer support where I answer your questions via email, chat, telephone, whatever. And today I will just do that, answer your questions regarding the topics of today's webinar while Andreas will be presenting. Yeah, that's all from my side. Back to Andreas. Okay, maybe in additional uh, information to me, I've been working for the company Dluba Software for 13 years. Okay, then we can switch off the webcams that the attendees can see the full screen. I say some words, yeah, at least for the attendees who participate the first time. You can see a control panel on the right side of your screen. You can show that with that arrow and then you can enter the question here. Yeah, and then you will get an answer from, from Jürgen. Um, yeah, if you don't get an answer because there are too many, he's alone, <laughs> uh, yeah, then you will get an email in the next days. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and email your questions to info at global.com. Okay, then I come to the agenda today. First point is new features in RFM6 and RSTAP9. I introduce yeah, some features. Uh, I said it already, what, what we implemented in the yeah, about the last year. Then new features implemented in the add-ons and standalone programs. Yeah, the first point is yeah, for features that are directly in the main program and those features are in the add-ons and standalone programs. Then I introduce new add-ons and the last point is pro prospects. Yeah, I give an overview what we schedule to implement uh, in the next time. Yeah, it's yeah. The the main presentation is in PowerPoint, but I will also introduce some features in the program directly in the program, but only for features that are in RFM six. Yeah, it's I think those are the features that the most of you are interested in. Okay, then I come. To the first point, new features in RFM6 and RSTAP9. First feature support force transfer from our model. Yeah, we implemented a load wizard for that. And you can transfer you know, reaction forces as nodal or line loads uh, from one to the other model. I will show that in the program, but yeah, I skip uh, or I turn already to the next feature, new interfaces. We implemented the take last structures interface, uh, a bi-directional interface, then the step uh, interface, then RSF for Alplan and SVG. Uh, the, those are vector graphics. So then I turn to the program and I introduce the first feature, the load wizard for the support force transfer. So I would like, I, I prepared those two models, 
that's uh, yeah, a small shelter that should stand on that roof here. And the four columns should yeah, stand on these four points. I select only the roof slab that we get a better overview. So that's quite better. So, and now I turn to insert in the menu, insert, load wizards. I can see all the load wizards, the member loads wizard, or, and snow load and wind load wizards. And that's the new wizard or quite new wizard. And I open it. Yeah, and important information, all, uh, the, all the models that you, when you or when you want to transfer a load from one to the other model, the models must be placed in one folder in the Dubai Center. So I have several models in one folder. Uh, this, those are the models for today, and that's number one. And the shelter is correct for the building. Then that's why we can leave that. I turn to the next menu, objects. You can select the support node or supported nodes in that model, in the shelter model. I can select all or yeah, only different uh, nodes when not all, yeah, for example, in this uh, example, not all columns should stand on the next model. Okay, I select all. We have only nodal loads, no line loads, but yeah, it would be the same workflow. If you have, yeah, for example, under those uh, line supports, uh, a member in this model, then you can check that to create member loads. Yeah, with a member loads on the selected line. Then we turn to loading. You can apply the line loads as uniform load or varying load. Yeah, that yeah, depends on you. Then you can uh, yeah, choose the connection type manually or automatically. Uh, manually, you, you can select the different load cases two loading and so on. I've in the shelter model only one load case. That's why I can do that automatically. But you can uh, yeah, define in this table all the different load cases. Load case, case one, two, load case one, load case two, two load case two or something like that, if you want. Then you have to select the direction. I select on uh, the uh, three directions. You can also transfer moments if you have a uh, yeah, rigid nodal support, for example. Okay, that's all. So, uh, ah, I forget something. Uh, I have to select the nodes in the building model. Yeah. So I select them in the right order. Okay, now all is fine and then press OK. And you see yeah, the loads, but yeah, with a question mark, they are not calculated yet. I have to start the transfer by calculating it. Now the program yeah, connect uh, connects both models and transfer the loads from one load case uh, to the new load case. And you can see, I can compare the support reactions and uh, in the opposite direction acts the nodal load. 3.7 on this side uh, and on this side 1.39. So, and when you change, for example, the load here in the shelter model, I uh, enter two kilonewton per square meter. 
Okay, then I calculate the load case again. Then I save it. So then where comes the question, this action deleted all results. Yeah? It means the results in the building model. Yes, okay. And now I transfer the loads again. So let's compare the reactions and loads. 11.31. Yeah, and 3.92. And also the horizontal loads were transferred correctly. Okay, let's alter this feature. Uh, I would like to show you the interfaces. Export, yeah, for example, the ASF um, interface. Then uh, to all plan, yeah, as SVG import step and so on, and the other interfaces that are already implemented. And then there are also the direct interfaces to Tikla structures and Revit. Yeah, you need to install the other uh, application, and then there's an uh, additional menu here you can transfer yeah, models and and so on okay i turn back to the powerpoint the next slide building grid is a new feature uh, yeah, you can optional uh, add dimensions i showed it in the program so i Close these two models. So, yeah, simple model. And I go to insert, guide objects, and building grids. So that's the menu. Yeah, you need to yeah, enter the dimensions of the grid now uh, usually they are known with a space between the uh, numbers right. and zero and minus three okay and you can already show that in the preview when I press this button I can see if it's correct. You can enter here uh, numbers also if you want rows and axes. I uh, leave them as they are. You can log it in the graphic. You can uh, add grid points that you can snap uh, such cross points here I can I hope we can see that then those are the grid lines uh, those are the grid points labels you can add dimensions and so on so and if you want to yeah enlarge the lines here you can select those uh, entries here so and another two meters oh, that looks quite good okay and yeah that's the line grid yeah i think a quite good feature so then also use the layout mesh for solids oh, that's for the geometrical analysis uh, that uh, is what i have in my mind uh, for example if you have a, a slab a foundation slab 
with a yeah, mesh size, for example, half a meter, and you have a very depth um, uh, soil model, for example, 10 meters high, and then you can define uh, yeah, a larger mesh, for example, one meter. That's the new feature. Yeah, but you can uh, yeah, choose it also for other solids. Oh, that was too far. Sorry. So that's the new page. Then it's possible to super uh, to do a supervision of the several geometric imperfection cases. We showed that already in a webinar about buckling analysis. That's for example for the G many A analysis. There, that's important to have that for such buckling analysis. Then the new features blocks with reference to block specification. Uh, imagine you have um, yeah, several similar blocks and you can define a mother blocks. And for example, you have more than one truss girders in your model. And when you change something in the mother block, it yeah, will be transferred to the child blocks. For example, the height, the height of, of the truss girder. Okay, then next page, optimization of cross sections. Yeah, that's available in the design add-ons like steel, timber, or aluminum design. And yeah, you can optimize for a section of, of series or for the y width or depth and so on. I would like to show that on uh, such a parametrized cross section. I turn to the program. So this model is already designed. Let's go to the timber design. I increase the table. Now we get a lot of results here. I turn to the input data and to the sections. You can see the three sections of this model and the you know, different utilizations. This section has a utilization of 64%. Those are the columns and this upper beams here. And I would like to optimize it. So how to do that? I go to this yeah, table here or and I open the drop down menu and I select optimize current row. So and I would like to optimize the width. We start with 100 millimeters and maximum should be 180. That's the current height. Uh, the current width, I mean. Then the step should be 10 millimeters. And now you can see in this table the available cross sections. And the program yeah, should optimize this cross section. Okay, we have to run the timber design again. So we turn back to the input data to have a better overview. Now we have got a utilization of 99%. The new or the optimized cross section has a width of 110 millimeters. But in the global model, there is still the, the old cross section. That's why we need 
to do a right click here and use the optimized sections in the model. And then we have to calculate all again. Also the load combinations and uh, the global model. The optimized cross section uh, has a uh, not, not so um, a less height, a uh, weight, a less weight. And now it considers the right cross section. Okay, let's see what we have got. Okay, now we've got the utilization of 96.5%. And yeah, for, for example, for steel models or for steel design, you can uh, optimize in, in one row or you can define a favorite list, for example, that the program optimizes for AGA or IPE uh, sections in, in one step. Yeah. Okay, I turn back to the PowerPoint. New feature is the calculation diagram type, 2D story. Uh, yeah, that's the creation of result diagrams via building axis. It's, it's yeah, for example, necessary for the seismic, uh, yeah, to visualize the seismic force over the building high. Now that's one example. Then the friction properties for line releases. Now let's take a look at this model here. For example, you have a concrete slab on a steel beam now and you would like to consider the friction, then you can define such line releases. Then the ponding load type. Yeah, you can consider rainfalls in, uh, yeah, in, in, in the ponding. And yeah, the program calculates the uh, ponding size and, and transfer, uh, transfer them to vertical loads. And yeah, that's usually unnecessary for membrane roofs or almost horizontal membrane roofs. I use this model in the program. Just a moment, ponding. So now uh, such a small uh, pavilion, for example, where the load case pre-stress, then wind, and through the wind you you get some uh, yeah such a deformation. Then the first load case of the pond one pond one. I double click on it, and you can see the load type here ponding. You can select the amount of, of uh, precipitation and yeah, then the specific weight, or yeah, in this case, water, 10 kilonewton per um, cubic meter, meter uh, and an amount of precipitation of one millimeter per square meter. Okay. Then the next load case, has two millimeters uh, per, per square meters uh, per, per square meter, and the next load case where we defined no amount of precipitation. It should rain until yeah the pond is full. Okay. And you can see yeah in this load cases there are no deformation only in the combination with the wind you have got the deformation of the of, from the wind and on this place where it can collect water so let's take a look on the combination number two yeah, with wind and point one 
and let's take a look into the navigator results shape and the water depth or the water level doesn't matter i go to the wireframe model and you can see that's the point for this load case one millimeters uh, uh, one millimeter per square meter then two millimeter per square meter yeah and full and now the pond is full and yeah, the rest of water flows over the edge and you can also select the water depth i switch on the panel now you can see when it's full the water depth is about 60 millimeters then for this combination about 40 millimeters and for this one about 30 millimeters okay then i turn back to the powerpoint next feature spring member type yeah you can define uh, a spring constant for example uh, and usually that's force divided by displacement then the generating combination with more than one initial state uh, you can uh, consider yeah, different in, uh, initial states for a target uh, combination yeah, for, for example for a form finding process with uh, varying uh, imperfections. Then we implemented the scaffolding hinge. Yeah, if you want to design scaffoldings, you can use this special hinge. Then, uh, yeah, I think a very valuable new feature, the cross-section modification using our section yeah, you transfer a cross section to our section and can you can modify it there and import it again to often i would like to show that on an example that's the last model for today so i would like i go to the sections i would like to change this cross section now for example i do a right click on it edit so and that's the new button the uh, transfer to our section so i press it our section opens and the cross section yeah you, you can see the message there often mode so to modify this cross section i have to just a moment section I have to explode it by right click on the section explode then i modify it a bit a little bit now i move that in this direction minus 30 millimeters okay and i i add a new element a line with a thickness a small sheet so that's the start point then i enter the new coordinates minus 40 for example thickness yeah, okay 10 millimeters that's okay i apply that so and then I would like to transfer that back to RFM. Yeah, I have to press return, uh, save and return. So now we are back in RFM, and you can see the modified cross section. And now you can use it for the forward calculation. Let's take a look on one of, of these members. Now you can see the modified cross section. Okay, let's turn back to our uh, to the PowerPoint slide. 
So new features are also the cloud calculation. Yeah, maybe you you know that when you have a larger model and it calculates a, a longer time, and yeah, the the power of your local computer is then less when you when you work in other programs, and yeah, then you can use the cloud calculation. I turn back to the program to show it under calculate you can find calculate in cloud and yeah you can choose the machine machine type automatically or microsoft azure and you can select one of these machines and but yeah but you have to buy credits for the cl cloud calculation yeah, and this link leads to the web shop. And yeah, in the extranet you can see the calculation task of yeah, your company or the, or your calculation task. Yeah, I think a very good feature of when you have to design larger models. Yeah, not for models that calculate one minute or so, but for larger models. Then a new feature is are, are the info bubbles for line supports. You can activate it in the navigator results. Now for example you can see then in the bubble the, you know, the description you know, uh, some mean value and so on. Yeah, then the next new features are yeah, valid for the timber uh, constructions, but you have to define it in RFM directly. Yeah, that's why I've uh, yeah, added here to the new features in RFM 6 and RSTAP 9. The shear force reduction, uh, you can reduce the shear force with that new feature. Uh, to uh, optimized uh, yeah, design uh, with a with a smaller uh, shear force or reduced shear force. Then there are curved section distributions, uh, mainly for the timber uh, yeah, for for timber constructions, curved um, pitched cumbered beams, fish beams. Yeah, those four. Well, those four. Um, yeah, beams. Then a new feature is the uh, transversal compression stiffening elements for design supports. Uh, when you have, uh, you can support it with screws here. Oh, sorry, that was already the next slide. Yeah, and you can design shear resistance is, uh, is ch checked in plan of screw tip and also a bolt analysis for pressing in and buckling. Then we turn to the next point, new features and add-ons and standalone programs. The, I continue with the timber design add-ons. You can consider the crack factor KCR for surfaces. Then the design of LVL uh, members is uh, possible according to Eurocode 5. Now there are uh, four manufacturer are available, Paul Meyer, Metze, Steiko and Stora Enzo. Then more features in the timber design add-ons are the, yeah, for the Swiss standard, the design of cross-section of method one type. Yeah, those cross-section here, we implemented the Australian standard and the design of CLT panels is not only available for the Eurocode, but also for the Swiss standard and US and Canadian standard. Then the multi-layer surfaces add-on. 
where is a library of manufacturer for CLT panels, for example, Binderholz, Derricks, and so on. Yeah, and there are also more compositions for the USA and Canada. Then, yeah, a lot of new features in the concrete design add-on, the design of our section, cross-section. Yeah, you can define a cross-section in our section yeah, with the longitudinal reinforcement and also the shear reinforcement. Then you can transfer it to RFM or RSTAP and design it there. We already showed it in the webinar. Yeah, just click on that link here. You can download the PowerPoint slides in PDF format from our website. At the end of my presentation, I show you where you can find uh, those slides and the recording and so on, and also the models. Then you is uh, the cross tile uh, reinforcement. Yeah, such uh, additional cross ties on free rebars of, of longitudinal reinforcement. Yeah, you can see that here in, the, in this image. Yeah, and you can also consider them in the design. So then it's possible to, as the design of fiber. The reinforced concrete is possible. We already showed that in a webinar. Yeah, just click for more information on that link or watch the webinar. Then a fatigue design is possible and we implemented two different methods here in the program or in the add-on. Then the seismic design according Eurocode 8 is now possible. We showed it also in a special webinar. Yeah, if you would like to get more information, just watch the webinar. I added the link here. Then a simplified fire resistance is now possible according to Eurocode 2 for columns and beams. So then a new feature is the layout of re, uh, surface reinforcement. Now you can uh, yeah, select what you uh, want to lay out or what the program uh, should lay out, uh, the rear, uh, rebar diameter or the rebar spacing. Yeah, often wished feature and we implemented it. So more features are the multiple multiple editing of member reinforcement. And you can see that in the image here, you can define the reinforcement for more than one member. Then you is the requ uh, required reinforcement for serviceability limit state, and you can print. Uh, graphics via print templates now. So then we turn to the steel design add-on. It's now possible to design code form sections according these standards here. Eurocode, USA, Canada are the countries. And yeah, we showed it in the webinar, at least for the Eurocode. Yeah, if you want to watch that, just click on that link. And yeah, for the normal steel, we this, uh, yeah, we implemented new standards, the Switzerland standard, uh, then for Brazil, and the American seismic design is now available. Then the add-on structure stability, the modal relevance factor is now available. Yeah, it's quite useful if you want to you know, use the buckling length for a stability analysis or for your design. You can use that modal relevance factor. Yeah, uh, yeah you can 
see it's if it is a local or global mode shape for a better description yeah, you can click on that link and you get more information how that works then there are a lot of new features in the steel joints add-on uh, yeah the steel joints uh, it's a steel joint design for build up and thin walled cross sections yeah, according to your code and the american standard then there are new components the connection plate member editor inserted member now you can for example uh, insert a member that will won't be considered in the global program then an uh, auxiliary solid yeah, to cut something out, then a cap plate. Yeah, for example, when you want to define a, a cap plate on the top of a, of a column, yeah, then you can use it. And yeah, it takes you only, uh, yeah, uh, not many or not many steps. Then the welds are designed now plastically. Uh, it's more effective than before. Then you can calculate the uh, initial stiffness uh, for the normal force and the moments, uh, and the multiple selection is possible. And then you can find it in the table. So then the classification, you can then find in the table if the connection uh, or the joint is hinged, semi-rigid or rigid. Then you can consider preloaded bolts on all components. You can uh, define if you want to consider the preload. Uh, and then it will be considered in the stress stain analysis and the stiffness analysis. Then now are uh, the circular hollow sections are available uh, with a well joint. Uh, you can see the connection uh, yeah, of the sections of one section to uh, another section or the yeah to planner structure components. Yeah, you can see the weld here and also there's a weld. Okay, then building model add-on, the floor analysis of detached to the these structures is available. You can calculate the global model and then you can calculate uh, local, the, uh, the 2D, uh, 2D you can do it uh, 2D uh, calculation of individual floor, floors. Yeah, for example, in that image here, you can see the roof slab. Then the low transfer only story type, you know, without any stiffness, and it collects the loads and transfer them to uh, the next element. Then there are different modeling tools for building models, vertical line, columns, and so on. Yeah, and more features are the shear walls, defining of deep beams, and the building story generator. The building story generator, yeah, you can do with one click or can create with one click all the building stories. Uh, when you have got such a model, and with one click, all building stories are defined. So then add-ons for the dynamic analysis, the automatic operation, uh, operation to reach a specific effective modal mass factor. Now it's a often wished feature from our customers. You the, the program, yeah determines the count of eigenvalues until the 90%, for example, of effective model mass is reached. And you don't need to do that manually. 
anymore. Then the sensitivity co coefficient is new. Yeah. It k fi figures for uh, interpreting sensitiv sensitivity with regard to stability effects for building models. So then our section, the plastic resistance with variation of shear stresses, that's available for the plastic capacity design uh, according to the simplex method. Yeah, um, it's an effective design if you choose that. Now, for example, the program uh, applies the normal stresses on the flanges and the shear stresses on the on the web. So then new features in our wind, displaying the our wind results directly in RFM6. Yeah, for example, the surface pressure, as you can see in the image, the CP coefficient, and so on. More features are, yeah, we showed it already in a webinar, for example, that you can use experimental data. Yeah, if you are interested in, in this new features, just watch this webinar. Then the third point of today, new add-ons. There's a new add-on pushover analysis. We already showed it in a webinar. I can consider the real structure behavior and seismic analysis. Yeah, and it leads to an efficient design. Yeah, just watch this webinar if you want to use the pushover analysis. Then another new feature also for the dynamic analysis, analysis is the time history analysis. And, uh, it's an analysis of time diagrams and accelerograms. In this webinar, uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to watch the webinar, just click on the link, and uh, you can see that we uh, applied in this webinar. Or we we did the design for mesh uh, induced vibrations. So then the third point, uh, fourth point, sorry, fourth point of today, the prospects. Um, yeah, approximately one year ago, I presented a similar webinar and we planned that features. Yeah, beginning with uh, 2023. Those are the features that I introduced and all what is now green are already implemented. Yeah, I showed the load transfer, the new add-on, pushover analysis, cloud computing, and so on. Those are already implemented. So, and in the next slide, you can see the four features that are still remaining. Yeah, the first four. Yeah, that's also on the agenda for the future. That's why I called this uh, yeah, headline plan features from yeah, beginning from this year. Those are they are the first four features are add-ons that we offered in RFM5. Yeah, and we force to implement them also in RFM6. But what we also plan is uh, or sch uh, schedule is the design of timber frame wall assemblies. Yeah, that's a typical construction type of yeah, prefabricated houses. Then the Python console will be implemented. Yeah, it's a future-proof input planner, a panel flexible to use. Then in steel joints, we uh, schedule to implement the dimensioning and labeling tools. 
we already implemented the points on the face uh, that they can be snapped. Yeah, and that's a requirement for this feature. Uh, we will implement that in the future. Then you should, uh, or it's planned that you can uh, consider the stiffness in the global model, uh, the real stiffness of the joint. Yeah, that, and then the transfer to the global model will be possible. Footings are also planned. Then the partial deletion of results. Uh, for example, imagine you have got um, a basic reinforcement of, of one floor that you want to change. You don't need to calculate the other floor to, to, to design the other floors again. Uh, that's only one uh, example. Then moved loads. That was an add-on in RFM5. And we plan to implement it directly in RFM6. Yeah, that's then available in RFM6, and you don't need to buy an add-on for that. Then support load transfer to free loads. Yeah, that's a more flexible solution than that what we showed uh, that what I showed in this webinar. Then bridge combinatorics. Yeah, you can create load combinations according to Eurocode for, for bridges or for bridge design. Then damping elements yeah, for dynamic analysis. Then pulley members will be available. Our wind results completely in RFM not only what I showed in the PowerPoint, also will then available uh, the, the streamlines, for example, you can animate them then in, in RFM and so on. Then the hinge result diagram, yeah, for example, for pushover analysis. Then the nonlinear time step analysis, that will be an extension of the time history analysis add-on. Then the scaffolding support. Yeah, if an axle force uh, depend support. Then ground linearization. It's an optional substitute of soil solid by by spring supported surfaces. Yeah. To, to optimize or to yeah, decrease the calculation time. That will be an option. Then fire protection of timber surfaces. Yeah, you can, yeah, or the calculation will be done using the reduced cross section. Then independent mesh. Yeah. yeah e.g. for the geometrical, uh, geotechnical analysis or solid design, uh, then I forgot uh, semi-rigid diaphragms. Uh, that will be an option in building model add-on uh, for floor elements. Then now I am, uh, yeah, concrete uh, design can consider push over hinges and uh, yeah, the push over properties depending on reinforcement. Then the automatic reinforcement layout for members, the for the fire protection, the, we will implement the zone method and def uh, then the, the definition of existing punching shear reinforcement. Then welds will be implemented in our section. You can define them there and also design the welds. So then shear wall design and coupling beam design, you know, a normative design depending on material. Then enhanced plasticity design, um, 
you know, in, in the, at the moment when you do a warping torsion uh, analysis, then it, you know, there will be there is an elastic design, and in the future it's also possible to do a plastic design in combination with the warp, warping torsion analysis. Then we will implement new standards for steel and timber structures. Well, for example, the standards of China, Italy, USA, South Africa, and so on. Then the wind analysis, you, you can, or we plan to implement also the cloud computing. Usually the wind analysis takes you know, a lot of time sometimes, depending on the model, what you want to design. And then you can use the cloud, cloud calculation. Then we will implement Python interfaces, Bricks, CAD, Excel, DSTV, and SDNF. And yeah, the last planned feature, what I would like to introduce here is the artificial intelligent chatbot. It will be an option on our website and in the program yeah, for 24 seven assistance. We collect all the information that you already get uh, on our website for example in the faqs or the knowledge bases or the product features yeah and it yeah you can enter a question and then the program or the chatbot gives you an answer it yeah it don't replaces our normal support of course it's an additional option for you for example when you want to get information in the evening or at the weekend and so on okay that should be all for the features for the new features and the planned features I would like to invite you to the digital bar in Cologne. You can secure your free ticket if you want. You can book a live demo. Just click on that link or uh, on that link or scan that QR code. Yeah, and then you get a live demo and uh, you get a free ticket. If you don't come to Cologne, you can book your free online appointment yeah, anytime. Just click on that link. For, for example, for a product demonstration or something like that, just contact our sales team anytime. Okay, then I turn to the website to show you where you can find all for this webinar, global.com. And under news and events, you can find the webinars. That's today's webinar. Those are the webinars for the next week. Oh, this is for the next week, and those are for the next weeks. Next week, a geotechnical analysis on FM6, then the timber floor calculations, the FAQ webinar that I also present to, together with Jürgen. Then the calculation of reinforced concrete slabs and so on. Okay, I click on today's webinar. In the next days, you will get an email that there's a link implemented that leads directly to that page. Then you will find the recording here. You can already download the presentation slides. Yeah and you can find the models here and can download them if you want to go through the webinar yeah, by yourself okay that should be all from my side thank you for your attention i hope we meet each other in a future webinar thanks to jürgen for answering the questions
Maybe a last wish when you leave the webinar, there's a small survey, you can score the webinar. Yeah, just uh, consider that the worst score is one and the best score is five. You can enter wish for future webinars and so on, yeah, but you can also leave the, those fields empty uh, if you want. Okay, then have a nice rest of the day and bye-bye.